Hey everyone, RevTech here. Have you ever been frustrated by a website that's impossible to navigate? Ever wondered how people with disabilities use the internet? Do you think making technology accessible is a requirement that everyone should honor or is it just a luxury? Well, this week we're celebrating Accessibility Day. Yes, that is a thing. And we're jumping into why accessibility in the technology space is not just important, but essential. Stick around to learn how we can make the digital world more of a resource and usable for everyone. So what is accessibility? When you hear the word accessibility, you may be thinking of wheelchair ramps or braille on signs, but in our rapidly evolving digital world, accessibility has a much broader and a much deeper meaning. It's all about making websites, apps, and other digital tools usable by as many people as possible. Imagine you're at a concert or you're at a movie, but you're stuck behind a tall person and you can't see the screen or the stage. Accessibility and technology is like someone offering you a step stool so you can enjoy the show just like everyone else. It's about leveling the playing field and ensuring that no one is left out. So why does accessibility matter? Well, let's think about some real life examples. Have you ever tried to use a website that wasn't mobile friendly? It's frustrating, right? Now imagine that frustration multiplied over and over and over again for someone who has to rely on assistive technologies like a screen reader to access a website. Accessibility isn't just a nice to have feature, it's a must have for creating an all available digital environment. When we make our digital spaces accessible, we're ensuring that everyone has equal access to information, to services and opportunities experienced in our sites and our apps. Alert, alert, alert. We're gonna get technical for a moment here. Before you would dive into building a website or an app for your NFC, that's a nonprofit faith-based organization or church, it's crucial to plan for accessibility. Think of it this way, adding accessibility features later can be like trying to put sprinkles on melted ice cream. Uh, it's messy and it's not as effective. That's why planning ahead is so important. Tools like WAVE, the Web Accessibility Evaluation Tool, and the Axe Framework, an integrated system for coders, can help you spot issues before they become major problems. These tools act like a, a spell checker for accessibility, helping you to catch errors and make necessary adjustments. But wait, there's more. Hang on to your seat, baby, cause this one's a screamer. Creating accessible web pages is like cooking a meal. You need the right ingredients. And in this case, those ingredients are HTML semantic elements. I told you we were getting geeky for a second. HTML semantic elements are specific tags in a web page that clearly describe their meaning both to the browser, that's the computer, and also to the developer or the coder behind the screens. Unlike generic tags like div or span or table, you may have heard those before, Semantic elements such as header and footer and article and nav provide a clearer understanding of the structure and content for a web page. Think of your website as a school backpack. Backpack, 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 backpack. In the same way you have pockets for pencils and books and snacks, a website has special places, special labels for those pockets. So think like title and articles and menus. These special labels like header for the title or nav for the menu, the navigation menu, they help computers and people know which part each is for. It's like having a backpack with pockets labeled pencils and books and snacks so you know exactly where to find what you need. These elements serve as landmarks that assistive technologies like screen readers can use to help users navigate a website. And Aria, or Aria, I feel like this is a potato, potato, we always go back and forth. An Aria application refers to a web application that uses accessible, rich internet applications, or Aria, standards to enhance accessibility. It was developed by the Web Accessibility Initiative, the WAI. Well, these Aria attributes, um, as they were, they're a set of attributes that you can add to HTML elements on your page to make them more accessible to people with disabilities. These attributes help screen readers and other assistive technologies understand the roles and the states and the properties of various elements on a web page or an app. For example, the ARIA can indicate that a button is pressed 
or that a drop down menu is expanded. Uh, in essence, an ARIA app is a web application built with focus on ensuring that users with disabilities can interact with it as seamlessly as those without. ARIA roles provide additional context, making it easier for everyone to navigate your site. It's like adding signs and signals in a building to help everyone, regardless of their abilities, understand how to move around and use the facilities effectively. Now, with all these things, don't forget the most important thing, and that's showing your website and app to real live people. It's, a, it's really crucial to test everything with a diverse user group, including people with disabilities. Speaking of how we view things, let's also think about how video conferences need some love too. <laughs> well, in today's remote work environment, video conferencing tools have become a staple. Features like close captioning are game changers. They're, they're like subtitles of your calls and your video, making it easier for everyone to follow along. Many of us use tools like Zoom and Microsoft Teams. Well, those tools offer several accessibility features that enable those with disabilities to, to schedule and to attend and to participate in meetings and webinars. Uh, these tools are really great if we make sure that we're turned on. So make sure system administrators and people who control these systems Make sure they're turned on for your organizations and for your churches. Keyboard shortcuts, screen readers, settings, color options, font size issues, translations, auto language captions, time settings, the list goes on and on and on. Okay, there are a lot of things to consider. Well, in reality, we, we can't do everything for everyone all the time, but we can at least start somewhere. So in the spirit of wrapping things up, uh, accessibility is not just a checkbox to tick off. It's a responsibility that we all share in the tech community. By making our digital world more accessible, we're opening doors for everyone to participate fully. So whether you're a developer, a designer, or just someone who happens to be responsible for using the technology for your org or for your church, remember that your actions can make a world of a difference to someone who needs a little bit extra help and accessing the application, the website, and the services that you're providing. Thanks for joining me and helping me celebrate Accessibility Day this week. I encourage you to prioritize accessibility and all of your digital work and all of your digital presence. And for more resources and for further reading, definitely again, check out the links below in the description. And if you have any questions or need further consultations, feel free to reach out to me. Let's make the digital world, the technology world, accessible for everyone. RevTech out.